Sanders on to the To intro run. the Jakari report, then we're coming back GCN after that. Radio Here Network. comes David with updates, Infowars.com. Drudge has a new story on TSA. The globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs and then concentrated for maximum potency super male vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals super male vitality by infowars life is so powerful that i only take half the recommended dose for a limited time we are offering 15 percent off super male vitality at infowarslife.com to introduce you to this powerful supplement visit infowarslife.com today to secure your super male vitality infowarslife.com a chemical spill contaminating the water supply in nine West Virginia counties. This year alone, over 300,000 people in West Virginia had their drinking water contaminated. What are the health effects of having these drugs in our drinking water? It's forced medical treatment without the consent of residents. My friends, water filtration is one of the most basic actions you can take to protect you and your family from the harmful toxins and heavy metals in your tap water. On average, the county says it sprays with the glyphosate at least once a week. Few filters cut out the glyphosate that is found in water supply worldwide. Remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, hydrofluorosilicic acid, sodium hexafluorosilicate. Fluoride it is in tea, it's in coffee, it's in water, it's in bread, it's in toothpaste. It is our responsibility to protect our families. The establishment's not going to do it. It's time to take action. It's time to filter our water. Visit InfoWarsStore.com and use promo code WATER to get 10% off their entire family of incredible products. Or call toll-free 888-253-3139. From the water table, to our soils, to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. We are on the march. The empire is on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and we've got a special report from Jakari Jackson about the Boston bombing. This is the one-year anniversary, but I want you to see the kind of police state that is still going on. This is a story that's linked on the Drudge Report, on the right-hand side of the Drudge Report, a video of TSA agents patting down two- and six-year-old children. This is a video. The child appears to say something like, I, I need to go, and is clearly uncomfortable with the pat-down, as they should be. This is nothing but child molestation in the phony name of security. And this is something that they were supposed to have stopped doing years and years ago. But this is the kind of police state that people are embracing in the aftermath of the Boston bombing. Here's Jakari's report. We're live. It's 2.08 Central. And uh, two explosions at Boston Marathon. People hurt in large explosions. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. And that'll... Uh... And well, are they going to blame it on Iran, blame it on a patriot group? Or is it going to be a veteran or something? I mean, this is just so horrible. Uh, and uh, again, I hope nobody's really been hurt bad and also hope it's a gas main uh, or, or something like that. Uh, because they will, again, they're going to turn all public events. First, it's have checkpoints at the airport, then it's the mall, then it's the sports stadium, then it's the hotel, then it's the highway, then it's the bus station, this is already in Austin, uh, then it's Army at the Kite Festival, uh, then it's, oh, any event has to have, you know, troops at it.
Drudge now running the headline, explosions at Boston Marathon. And it goes, multiple people injured, at least a dozen injured uh, after explosion. Uh, man, I hope this isn't a false flag or a real terror attack, Richard. Even if it's innocent, they will use it because everyone's focused on it now. And people can be controlled when they're all on the same emotion at the same time. You know, the government's been studying this since, you know, World War One. Pulling cash. Let's fade this up. There's a whole CNN? process underway right now. But the reality of the situation is it is almost impossible to protect an event, especially one that is over a protracted space as a We're marathon out. is. And, you know, I, I hate to say it, but these are the times that we live in. Uh, Richard, that's what, what they're so saying on CNN. Uh, so they're already basically saying it's a terror attack. Oh, my yeah. goodness. No, we're helpless is what he's saying. I know this. They got TSA ready to roll out nationwide. They're already doing it, but they've, they've been, I've talked to insiders. They're going to be everywhere now, just federal checkpoints. When he said, you know, unfortunately, these are the times we live in. So then when we, when we see soldiers at our kids' Little League game, we see soldiers, you know, everywhere. Well, we're supposed to feel safe. But again, the explosion, the main one there at the Marathon Sports, and then you can hear after that, Paula, it's just absolutely heartbreaking to see this. this it's is... been a year since the bomb attack at the Boston Marathon. InfoWars was pointing out the inconsistencies in the story from the very beginning. Was there any prior knowledge, Joe? Because according to BostonGlobe.com, they said they were doing drills this morning for the same exact thing to happen, according to BostonGlobe.com. Now, was you guys given any warning ahead of time of this uh, uh, taking place? As I said earlier, there was no specific intelligence. Oh, sir, why were loudspeakers telling people in the audience to be calm moments before the bomb went off? Is this another false flag stage attack to take our civil liberties and put more homeland security uh, sticking their hands down on the pants on the streets? No. And it wasn't just the Boston Globe who reported the drills. There was dogs uh, with their handlers going around sniffing um, for explosives, and, and we were told on a um, loud announcement that we shouldn't be concerned if this was just a drill. So may, may, maybe it was just a drill. Um, but I've just never seen a, a, a drill like that. The most show of force that a track coach has seen in a lifetime of marathons. This brings up questions of prior knowledge. And on the subject of prior knowledge, we found out that the CIA, FBI, and DHS knew of Tamlin Zarnaev before the bombing. Reports show that the older Zarnaev had previously attended a workshop sponsored by the CIA. The word is also out that the FBI and Department of Homeland Security had been tipped to Tamlin's visit to a radical mosque in Dagestan, a neighbor of Chechnya. The FBI felt that this was of little consequence and didn't consider him a threat. Also, the suspect's uncle Ruslan, who quickly distanced himself from his nephews, worked for USAID. As the article points out, the U.S. Agency for International Development is an agency used by the U.S. government to operate humanitarian NGOs instrumental in running color revolutions in former Soviet states. And he just so happened to be the relative of choice for state-run media. I understand that there must be several criminals and other people on U.S. databanks, especially with the DHS putting toddlers on the no-fly list. But if you have a suspect who the Russian government warned you about, attended CIA-backed workshops that the DHS was briefed on and the FBI interviewed, why does the FBI need public assistance identifying the suspect? Not to mention how the feds reportedly called the Zarnayev brothers after the bombing and before any other incidents. Somebody out there knows these individuals as friends, neighbors, co-workers, or family members of the suspects. Though it may be difficult, the nation is counting on those with information to come forward and provide it to us. Did you ask any of your co-workers their agent? Aside from Stonewall and InfoWars reporter Dan Badandi, goons got in his face for dare asking real questions. Are both suspects seen planting these devices at the finish line of the Boston Marathon? Both of them are the right? No. What time? What time? The only one who was observed planting what we believe to be the device is suspect number two with a white cap. Let's talk about those photos. It was bomb drills Monday morning. We got photographs on Infowars.com, folks. Of Next question, please. 
Jahar's white or gray backpack with the black stripes is clearly not the black backpack with the white or gray stripes that exploded. In fact, the bags are the exact opposite. The only official photos that should be officially relied upon in this investigation are those you see before you today. So what's the possible explanation for these bizarro backpacks? And you're carrying you a backpack. have one here. This is a white color, nylon, white, black. Like number two hat. Yeah. And then it's easy enough for you to go ahead and take out... Uh, the actual device that may hook house the weapon. There's one theory. Doubt of the official story could easily have been squashed by releasing footage of the bomb being placed. Footage that even Governor Deval Patrick hasn't seen. Well, the, the videotape uh, is not something I've seen. It's been described to me. Uh, but it does uh, seem to, uh, to be pretty clear that, um, that uh, uh, this suspect took the backpack uh, off put it down. And that brings up another piece of questionable footage. Who was the naked man? InfoWars reporter David Knight contacted Moret Zarnaev, the aunt of the suspects, who identified the stripped man as her nephew Tamerlan. Hello. Uh, hello, is this Merit Zarnaev? Yes, speaking. Hi, my name is David Knight. I'm with InfoWars.com. Uh, it's Alex Jones's operation. Have you heard of us? Yes, I've heard of you. Sir. And we would very much like to do an interview with you. Would that be possible? Since, since I have seen the material that you presented for the public before about the invasion bombing, even before the names of our boys were put out there, I was following you, you know, from the very beginning. Okay. I don't know. I have trust in that information. I have trust in you. And I would, I would like, I would like to have my word said. Good, good. Especially in the part when the, the guy that is that was uh, taken into custody by police and uh, given over to FBI, you know who I'm talking about. That, yes. That clip. Yes, yes. A the, naked guy. Yes. I have to, I have to publicly state that I confirm and identify this person as my nephew, Tamerlan Sarnaev. Moret's revelation has been widely ignored by the media. The outlets that did pick up the naked man's arrest quickly wrote him off as somebody who was not really a suspect in the first place. Before we go any further, let's talk about what the brothers allegedly did after the bombing, aside from reportedly talking to the FBI, as we mentioned earlier. The story goes that the two had a seemingly normal life. Jahar went back to school, but after being named suspects, the brothers went on the run and allegedly killed an MIT officer to get his gun, thus the story goes. To date, there is no DNA evidence or public photographic evidence that the brothers actually killed the officer in his patrol car. And just like with the placing of the bomb, the authorities want you to believe in footage that they refuse to show you. So where did this story come from? It's a theory that the brothers wanted a gun and targeted someone who would have one. But whoever killed Officer Collier didn't bother to take his weapon. Now let me be very clear. This is in no way to tarnish the image of the slain officer. All due respect to him and his family. I'm simply pointing out how hearsay surrounding his death is now considered gospel. But what about the carjacking victim? Didn't the brothers confess to him? Well, there are conflicting narratives concerning that too. Briefly, the carjacking victim known as Danny reported a movie-like escape from the Zarnaev brothers. But before he got away, Danny says Tamerlan confessed to killing the MIT officer as well as a role in the bombing. Contrast that with an earlier interview where Danny says Tamerlan mentioned the bombing but said nothing of the MIT shooting. Draw your own conclusion there. Oh, and the 7-Eleven robbery that took place, that wasn't the Zarnaev brothers. When the government and the shadow government has been gearing up to roll out and be our savior, and, 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 and they stand to gain from it, it's obvious. I mean, whoever the suspect is, the government will uh, appropriate it and create a narrative. And 90% and, and of it probably, I'm just guessing, will be a fabrication to shape our thought of police and military and safety and they're licking their chops they're now saying were there right wing or patriot meetings in the area uh oh uh oh oh man and that's cnn doing that oh wolf blitzer we are in trouble oh man i bet they even dragged me into it with my 1776 line
That was footage from the, quote, shootout between the Tsarnaev brothers and the police. This is one of the most contradictory moments following the bombing, with various witnesses contesting whether or not the suspects tossed bombs at the police, whether or not an officer was injured by friendly fire, and whether or not Jahar ran over Tamerlan. If the naked man is Tamerlan Tsarnaev as his...